I've been doing this for 10 years. Um, the Lord called me into it. Trust me, it was a middle of the night, wake up, spirit of health breathed out of my mouth. I had recently come to know the Lord. It was, it's a crazy story, but anyway, it's really cool. It's been an amazing journey of just learning about God, learning about health. I, that's kind of our slogan, so to speak. We love God, we love people, we love health. But really, my heart is to help people get off of the man-made man medical system onto God's system, back to God, back to Eden, back to nutrition, back to life, back to health, all of those things. We definitely live in a world that's kind of working against us. Now, you know, there's, we're working against ourselves too. I hope a lot of you have discovered that. I know I've learned that I'm my own biggest problem. However, we definitely have a world system that uh, makes it very hard for us to be healthy. Um, there's a lot of things working against us. So we just want to learn how to use herbs. And I went back to school. I studied naturopathy. I concentrated in herbology. I've trained with different master herbalists. I've got into iridology, which is fascinating. We've turned this little tiny place into kind of a cool, I don't know, I think it's kind of a cool little place. When people find it, they think it's kind of a cool little hidden gem. They're like, what are you doing here? Why are you in Grandview, Missouri? I'm like, oh, the Lord brought us here and I'm thankful to be here. So, uh, so we love it here, but we, we now do lab testing. We do iridology in these rooms here. We have a far infrared sauna. I have an IMRS, which is a magnetic copper coil therapy type of a device. We have a lymph machine. We have a Rife machine. We do ion detox foot baths. Um, it hasn't happened yet because I, I kind of got everyone excited and then I didn't follow through, but I told people we were going to open a juice smoothie bar. Do you guys, who remembers that? Yeah, it never happened. Um, Dairy Queen's going up right there though, so. No, we've already been praying, like assigning angels to the doors that they'll close down and that'll be our future juice smoothie bar. We just, Dairy Queen's going to build it for us. It's cool. Um, but we can build out that side of the building, 3,500 square feet. And I really, really, really want to build a Spirit of Health Spa. I really do. I really want to do like bring healing therapies to people um, that actually heal and restore health. Um, but herbs is what we're going to talk about today. And herbs are very, very powerful medicine. It's God's original medicine. And it's been lost in our culture, lost in our world. Trust me, my grandparents and not my parents were herbalists. They weren't, okay? We were like standard American diet junk foodlers. You know, we weren't herbalists. So we, we, I grew up like most, most of you probably, <laughs> just doing the normal American thing. So, but I'm very thankful to be kind of where I am now. And I've seen herbs change a lot of people's lives. So first, I just thought I would ask, just out of curiosity, just from a few of you, like, why are you here at this class? What do you want to learn? Yes? I want to learn how to be healthier for myself, my family, my future kids, for those around me. I have to do fitness coaching and stuff, so I yeah. know the more I can help. Amen. And man, I really want to be healthy. <laughs> Amen. That's good. That's good. And that's big on our hearts as, uh, as children, too, you know, just knowing how unhealthy a lot of our children are <clears throat> from birth and because of our culture and because of generationally what we've done. Like, how can we restore our children's health? How can we give them a better start? So, yeah, that's, that's good. Uh, anyone else want to share? Yes? I'm trying to figure out why nothing I do helps myself be okay. better. Okay. Yeah. yeah, for sure. Okay. Well, there's answers out there. We just got to keep trying, right? <laughs> yes? You mentioned this. Yes. Yeah. Right. Yeah. Or real emergencies. Yeah. <laughs> you know, because I got kids and one might break their arm. I'm not going to fix that. <laughs> you know? So, anyone else? Yes. Hi, Emily.
in physical healing and as well as inflammation yeah. in the body from trauma from a car accident. Um, so okay. Yeah. yeah. Amen. Good. So, you know, a lot of times I do these classes and ask people to save questions for the end. I don't want to do overdo it, but I do want to address some of these specific things. So when we're talking, if you just want to throw up your hand and, and, and ask a question related to something specific like that, you know, I'd like to stick on topic for the most part, but I definitely want to answer those questions because, you know, I'm here for you to empower people to learn about herbs, to learn about the things that God gave us um, that we uh, have lost or we're not educated on as much as we should be so that we can restore our health or help our children or um, you know, be better at what God called us to do, right? Everybody here has a destiny. Every one of you has a destiny that the Lord has given you. But when we lose our health, it makes that a challenge sometimes to fulfill that or we even question God or we might get upset at God about it. And so I really want everybody to, to understand that there are, there are solutions out there and I think herbalism is one thing that God gave us uh, from the beginning. I shared this in my last class. I won't do it in this class, but I read a little um, part of uh, Madame Guillaume's book, um, something she did on uh, Genesis, like a summary she did on Genesis. And she talked about how the first thing that formed on the earth in creation, it's Genesis 1.11, but there is this black void of earth that he created and the first sign of life he gave that black earth that was void of life was herbs. It's the first thing that was formed was herbs. Uh, and then the fruits and the trees and, you know, grasses and everything else. Even before the sun and the moon. I don't find that fascinating. Um, but herbs was the first thing that God created. It was the first life that existed on this planet. And I just think that's really cool. So I gave you three handouts because we want to talk about using herbs to cleanse and restore health, because I want people to have confidence in herbs. I've been doing this for 10 years, doing consultations with people, and I've been through a lot uh, with myself and my family and working with people, people uh, not understanding herbs, not understanding what's happening in their body, maybe quitting because of something that happened or they felt they had a reaction or whatever. So I just, I want to talk through some of those things. And I, I, I kind of probably would expect some questions in this area because it's, it is kind of confusing. We don't fully really understand our, our bodies and we don't understand a lot of times what's happening when we're cleansing or when we're taking herbs or sometimes we think we have a reaction and we assume like everything that happens is bad and it might not necessarily be, but we have to understand those things and what's happening in the body. So the first question is, do we need to cleanse? And I gave you two handouts that, that we give these as part of our cleanses. Just, we just include them with our cleanses, but just understanding what a cleansing diet is. And then I have some things called cleanse and responses, what you can expect through like a healing cause. Kind of like what Emily asked about, that, about back there, about like emotions, how emotions get, get stirred up during cleansing. I had a gal who uh, tried to do our 21-day kidney cleanse, and she quit day 10 because the emotions that were stirred up through the cleanse, the amount of um, memories and things from her past that were kind of coming into her mind uh, were more than she could handle in that moment. And, and that's okay. So she just kind of let the cleanse go and um, stopped, and then she tried it again. It's interesting. She said a, a similar thing happened. And so, so cleansing can not only heal us physically, but it can also bring up emotions and cleanse things um, even going way back. So, so do we need to cleanse? Yes? Do we need to cleanse? Does everybody need to cleanse? Yes. Yeah, so I, I equate that example we've used a uh, hundred times, but it, it's kind of silly to me that we would take care of our houses and change our air filters and change our oil filters and clean our fish tank and take care of all these things except for we don't think about cleaning our own bodies and maybe it's because we can't see inside it i don't know but i can't see inside my engine but i just trust that if i don't change my oil it's going to get all gummed up so does anybody here ever get gummed up now, we're all gummed up to some level 
and we've all experienced it. And that is the main reason people are ill. That's why a, a diagnosis doesn't usually help people too much because it doesn't tell them how to get well. But if you know that your body's congested and it's full of mucus or toxins or infections or heavy metals or whatever you got going inside of you and that it needs to be cleansed out, that's how we get well. So many people are like, where do I start? I don't even know what to do. Start with the colon cleanse. I just tell everybody, start with the colon cleanse. <laughs> I mean, it just makes sense. Like it's the main sewer pipe. And so if you do a colon cleanse, you're going to feel better. You're going to feel lighter and have more energy and all kinds of good things are going to start to happen. And so I've just had a lot of people just not know where to start, do a colon cleanse. And they, man, I hear over and over, why didn't I ever hear this before? Why didn't my doctor ever tell me about this? Why, why have I never done this before? People feel like they just got their life back or they're 20 years younger and I've heard all kinds of cool things. So it's always good just to start somewhere. But yes, we do live in a toxic world. Um, our children today, I mean, you go back to like my grandparents' generation and the kids growing up, they didn't have all the issues that we have today. And again, there's a reason for it. It's not just like cuz. I mean, it's cuz our world's crazy, but there's real reasons. There's real reasons our children aren't doing well, that they can't focus, they can't pay attention, um, they're sick all the time. Um, eczema and skin conditions is rampant in children today. Digestive issues, food allergies. I mean, it, it's just bad. I see a lot of kids. And my heart goes out to the kids because they're innocent growing up with all these health issues that they shouldn't have, ideally, and then and it's hard for the parents too because they don't know what to do. They don't, they don't have a lot of answers. It's kind of why we did our whole health fair last year. It was all a children's focus. We did all classes on children. I did a class on how to detoxify a child 101, just like the basics of how to get your kids starting to, to cleanse from some of the, 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 the stuff going on in their bodies. So, um, Number two, if you have an obvious health issue, a cleanse can help. Now, I live in this world, so sometimes I just forget that most people don't live in this world of talking about these things all day, every day. So I know that when somebody has a health issue, regardless of what it is, I know that if they do a cleanse, they will get better. Most people have never heard that or it's a foreign concept to them. And trust me, their doctor is not telling them to do a colon cleanse. In fact, they're telling them that like, well, it's dangerous and it's not studied and you might lose all your electrolytes and they just say all kinds of weird things because they just don't know. But I know that if somebody comes to me with headaches, chronic headaches and migraines, or if somebody comes to me with a frozen shoulder, or somebody comes to me with edema and swelling in their legs, I know that if they do a colon cleanse, those things will get better. And you can be like, well, that doesn't even make sense. Those things aren't even connected. Well, yes, they are. Your colon's connected to every single part of your entire body, just like your spine is. So as your colon goes and as your spine goes, there goes your whole body. So colon cleanse is always a place to start. Um, but cleansing can help most any health condition at some level. Most of what we're doing, you guys know this, I know you guys are educated and that's why you're here, but we're doing symptom management, right? We're taking drugs, pharmaceuticals, even herbs that just manage that symptom or make us feel better. People have high blood pressure and you can take our blood pressure powder all day long. That's great, it might work, it's better than a pharmaceutical drug, but I know that if you committed 21 days of your life to do our kidney cleanse, you wouldn't have high blood pressure and you'd feel better and your kidneys would start working better and your life would be better. So, so cleansing is, is, is always better. Congestion, I believe, is, is the root of most health issues. And this isn't new information. You read any good book on medicine, which means any book written before 1900, they will talk about toxicity and congestion and the old school word they use for it is called catar. Has anybody heard of the word catar? It's like a thick, mucusy sludge that builds up in people's bodies. I could tell you some really gross stories. I'll try not to, unless you guys want to hear some really gross stories. Some of you probably do, most of you don't. 
but I will, I will tell you this gal I'm working with, and I love doing my phone consults with her because like she pays me to do a phone consult and I tell her that I said, I feel like I should be paying you because I feel like I learn as much from her as she learns from me. And it's kind of cool because we have a mutual relationship because she's always studying, researching, learning new things. And she's got really bad mold toxicity and Lyme, which are debilitating conditions that can completely destroy a person's life. And she's fighting for her health because she has children and she has made unbelievable progress. I gave her my new sinus and brain detox formula that I talked about in the last class and she started doing that. And then she also learned about a couple of other things that I wrote down that I can't even remember and I'm gonna to have to research them later. But she said, I started doing these things in my sinus cavity and she goes, Vaughn, I can't even explain it, but it looks like thick globs of jelly are coming out of my sinus cavity. Now, nobody would like to think that they have something like that, and I don't know if you do or not, but I guarantee you probably 70, 80% of the people sitting in this room do. So, you know, we are gummed up. We are congested. Why are people getting their gallbladders cut out? Why are people getting their appendixes cut out? Why are people getting, having all kinds of, uh, of bowel conditions and doing steroids and getting surgeries? It's because we are congested and we are gummed up. So the irony of it is that the most important thing for human health is your diet and cleansing. And the two things talked about the least and usually ridiculed by our medical industry is your diet and cleansing. So tell me that's not a conspiracy theory. <laughs> I don't know, I like to joke about the conspiracy theory thing. So if you believe in conspiracy theories, you're on it. You're on it. You're a real person who's awake, okay? All right, sorry. Uh, so number three, what do we cleanse? So common areas, the main pathways, colon, kidneys is always a place to start. It's the elimination pathways of the body. If you're not eliminating out of your colon and kidneys, you're not gonna get healthy. Things get backed up. Um, you get congested. You know, if you have stuff going on up here, you got stuff going on down here. It's a drainage system, okay? So we can work directly on the sinus cavity, but if you work on cleaning out your colon, you actually feel your head draining. I've felt it. A lot of people I work with start doing cleanses. They can feel their head draining and detoxifying. You can feel the lymph on the back of your neck and on the sides of your neck. You can feel it throbbing and pulsing as your body's cleansing and detoxifying. You start to get sore under your armpits. These are the things we're gonna get into that you actually, like actually start having a cleansing healing response because your body's actually waking up from years of being congested and tight. And we just put muscle relaxers on it and feel better for a few hours. We're gummed up. Have I made that clear? <laughs> Yeah, you've said it enough. Okay, so it's not just cleansing like the colon and the kidneys and the liver. And yeah, we need to clean out those organs because there's major issues there. But people have toxicity. I mean, people have mold. People have Lyme. People have mercury toxicity. I had a gal, speaking of emotions, I had a gal who came in and we had to do lab testing on her because all of her symptoms, I would have guessed, because you can make some pretty good educated guesses based on people's symptoms. Um, that was all people used to have throughout history to try to figure out what's going on with people. Um, but I thought she had mold toxicity. I mean, she had all the symptoms of it. And uh, when we did the lab testing, it turned out her lead was And her husband was with her and they're like, oh my gosh, like we kind of thought that because of such and such. And I can't remember what happened where they had an issue with lead or an encountered lead. And they were always kind of wondering that. So we kind of confirmed that it was lead and then she started doing a heavy metal detox and so you kind of got to know what you're doing because this stuff can be pretty intense. But uh, she started doing the uh, heavy metal detox and I started her on the slowest, like the slow boat. Like when it's metals, you start with the slow boat, the slow program. And uh, her husband was emailing me and being like, I just want to make sure we're doing this right and everything's okay because she's an emotional roller coaster. She was like, and just like, just getting, and I'm not talking, you, might, you girls might be like, yeah, that's normal for us, no. But it was like, it was extreme, okay? It was, hey, it was extreme. 
No, I joke about guys plenty, trust me. No guys come in to see me because they all think they're okay and they have to be dying for them to actually admit that there's a problem. So I, I, I have no problem making fun of men. Um, but her emotions were all over the place and it was extreme because heavy metals really affect the body in a negative way. And so all kinds of, you know, think about the kids. You know, I see all kinds of kids with the, the ADHD and the autism and, and their emotions are a mess. And it's not because like that's just how they are. It's because there's poisons in the body interfering with how God designed their little, is that a sign? <laughs> there's toxins and poisons interfering with how God designed their little bodies to work. And I get to see them get better. And I don't ever take credit for it because I didn't design the human body. God did. He's the only one that we can give credit to for healing because he designed the body and he heals the body. So one of my favorite things to say is we just got to get out of the way and we got to get the toxins in our body out of the way of the normal functioning of, of God's design. So everybody here can get better of regardless of what challenges you're dealing with with your health if we can remove the interference of the things that's interfering with God's perfect design of the human body. God is a perfect designer. Um, but we've just done a lot of things that interfere with that. All right, so what happens to the body when cleansing? So I love this quote. I'm, I didn't put my name on it because I don't want to take credit for it because I heard it somewhere from someone and I can't find it anymore and I'm not sure who it was, but I love it. I wrote, the symptoms of sickness and disease are the same as the symptoms of healing. The difference is the elimination of toxins. Okay, so what does that mean? That means when you start a cleanse, you can start to feel symptoms of a cold or a flu, for example. Has anybody experienced that? Has anybody done a cleanse? and had like cold flu symptoms. Okay, a few of you. So, I love to give an example and I'll just make it kind of an extreme example. Okay, just to kind of drive home the point. Now, not everybody reacts even to junk food because it kind of depends on where your body's at and what your body's adapted to. But let's just say you don't do well when you eat dairy. Every time you eat ice cream, you get a headache, you feel it. You feel blah, lethargic, your stomach hurts a little bit, you get a headache. So you can eat ice cream and cheese pizza and you know that that response is a negative response. But it's actually kind of cool because it's God's design. It's God's design to tell us there's something wrong, right? So we're, we're designed in a way that like God's prodding us to let us know that there's something out of balance that we need to correct and like, please stop doing that to me, right? So it's hard for us to listen to that because we like the things we like. But so let's say you do dairy, you have a reaction. Now let's say you start to do a colon cleanse. And while you're doing your colon cleanse, your stomach starts to hurt, you get a headache, you start to break out in a little rash. That's not like the reaction you had when you ate the dairy. Does that seem pretty obvious? So you can do the wrong things and have symptoms related to doing the wrong things for your health. Because we've all had that bad weekend, okay, where we just went crazy and felt like junk or the holiday or whatever. But you can also start to do all the right things and have similar responses, and you might not like them. Has anybody here ever stopped drinking diet soda or stopped drinking coffee and got the headache? Do you know why that is? Yes, but that accumulates in your system. And when you stop drinking it, the body's so anxious to get rid of it, it starts dumping it into your bloodstream to eliminate it out through your kidneys. That's why you have a headache. It's a cleansing response, it's a healing response. Well, I don't like that response, so I just drink a diet soda and it goes away, right? 
get the coffee headache, drink a coffee, it goes away. So coffee is my cure, right? I can laugh at it because I've been there and you guys have been there, okay? So those responses are a healing response. And it's the process of the body eliminating toxins and waste and poisons. So when you're over congested, over toxic, and your body's accumulated poisons it's trying to get rid of, you can have eczema and psoriasis and all kinds of skin conditions. But when you're cleansing, you can also have skin conditions as your body might try to eliminate toxins and poisons out through your skin. It's a main elimination pathway, okay? So some of those symptoms are called like a healing crisis, a healing response. The real strong one's called a Herxheimer's reaction. If you've ever heard that term, like you're Herxine or you're having a Herxheimer's reaction. Now the way you can drastically minimize those responses that you don't like is by supporting your elimination pathways. So if you're doing colon cleansing, maybe doing enemas, or at least taking herbs to help your bowels move more, doing things to open up your kidneys, sweating, getting in a sauna, doing a detox foot bath. We do the ion detox foot baths here. If you're doing things to assist the detoxification process, you can minimize those quote unquote herps reactions those healing response reactions. Because when you start cleansing or fasting, again, God's a good designer. He can't wait to get poisons out of your body. Why? Why can't God wait to get poisons out of your body? You're made in his image. He's holy, right? Mm -hmm. he, he doesn't have toxins and impurities and poisons, and we're made in his image. So we're so wonderfully made in his image that if we give the body an opportunity to dispel and remove toxins and poisons out of the out of the body it does it that's why fasting is so powerful but if you jump into a water fast or a juice fast and you don't know what you're doing you can get really sick really fast so you kind of got to know what you're doing and that's why supporting the detoxification process through enemas and other things to help eliminate waste it's going to help minimize those responses. But also what I want you to understand is your body has a nervous system, right? Has anybody ever experienced their nervous system? That's not like a trick question. But, you know, like when you're two years old and my son falls off the couch and bangs his head, he learns about his nervous system. Now he's a boy, so he keeps doing it. But ideally we would learn not to do certain things because of the response it has on our nervous system. Well, when we're cleansing, our nervous system starts to wake up. We start to feel. Sometimes things that have been congested and gummed up for years start to unlock. That isn't always comfortable. Whenever I cleanse or fast or do a juice fast or something like that within a few days, under my armpits, I'm feeling a dull pulsing sensation. It's my lymph. Some people feel it up here. Behind your knees is a common lymph spot in your gut. So your body will start to unlock and it might not be comfortable because sometimes what you're doing is you're waking up a nervous system that's been asleep for a long time. And we numb our nervous systems. Is anybody here guilty of numbing their nervous system? Okay. I am. I think we all are. Okay. At some point in our lives, We've either done things that most people consider bad or things that we do that everybody thinks is okay, but we're still just kind of numbing our nervous system. You know, whether that's like smoking or drinking or drugs or cigarettes or just wine at night before bed or, you know, whatever kind of thing to help relax our nervous system. People use herbs for that. People use CBD. They use kava kava. They use kratom. They use things that relax their nervous system. And if you think about alcohol, for example, I want to give this one example, then I'll get your question, is I, I went to a seminar one time and it really struck me because I want to, I'm not an expert on like the emotional side. I, I feel like the Lord has a lot to reveal to me that, but Emily brought it up and so I wanted to mention it, but there was a gal that um, gave, was given a speech on the emotions tied to health and that when you start to cleanse and unlock your lymphatic system, trapped emotions that are in there start to express themselves. They start to come out. And she said, generational addictions 
will continue to happen generation after generation until somebody chooses to feel. And that really struck me. Because if you think about, you know, oh, my dad was an alcoholic, my grandfather was an alcoholic, there's deep wounding there that that person who's now an alcoholic because of their dad, they don't want to feel that. They don't want to uncover that pain. And so we mask it. Okay? And we've all done it. We've all masked our pain through something related to the nervous system. But what I'm saying is, is like, you're alive in God and made in his image, and you're designed to feel. It's just a lot of us have been hurt and, and we've been wounded in, in different ways, uh, physically, emotionally, and it's hard to go there. It's hard to feel. I don't know why I'm sharing all this, but it really does have a strong aspect to cleansing. And that when you, if you think about, you know, most people start cleansing because they just have a physical ailment. They want to get better. But when you realize the emotions that get unlocked and actually the things that start to surface from the past, it's kind of mind blowing. But it just shows that like God can heal us. But one of the things we have to do is we have to let him. We have to stop doing the things in the world that are stimulating us and sedating us and keeping us from feeling. Somebody I know here needed to hear that. So, do you have a question? My question is, you mentioned cigarettes and CBD and in the same sentence about numbing yourself. Is it a good or a bad thing to numb yourself? Is my question. Right, so that's probably a really long answer. But in a nutshell, yeah, I mean, in a nutshell, let me say it this way. I don't know if this will help or not, but let me say it this way. People are on pharmaceutical drugs. They're on antidepressants. They're in severe pain. You know, I want people to use the things that God gave us. I love people to use herbs. I would rather they use herbs to help them feel a certain way. I'd rather people take CBD than take painkillers, right? So I'd rather people use the things God gave us as medicine instead of pharmaceuticals especially. So I don't think those things are bad at all, but if they become your go-to and they become your crutch and they become the thing that you're reliant on to feel a certain way because there's a deeper level of healing that God wants to get to that he can't get to because you're always using this thing, we could call that thing an idol maybe. You see what I'm saying? It can just get to the point where that becomes the thing and God isn't the thing anymore. Does that make sense? Yes, sir. Okay, sure. So, let me see how much of this I always already covered, because I have notes, but usually I just talk. So, <laughs> it is normal when the body is sick or unhealthy to experience symptoms as cold flu, cough, nasal congestion, sore throat, fatigue, headaches, loss of appetite, rashes, fever, muscle, or body aches. So what people think of what they feel when they're sick is the same thing you can possibly and very likely feel when you go into a cleanse or a detox. It just depends on how deep you go into it. The goal I always tell people is elimination. So when I have people I see that have chronic lung stuff, asthma for 20 years, mucousy congested, can't do dairy because it's mucus forming. As soon as they do it, bam, it just nails their chest because they're already just full of mucus and congestion. So you can't keep adding fuel to that fire. But I tell them, I'm like, if you want to get better, and I know people want to get better, if you want to get better, that stuff has to come out. Because for 20 years, every time something happens, you take your steroid inhaler, it settles everything down, and you stay sick. You know? And that's what's happening with people. And again, I want to see people led to freedom. And that's why I see herbs and cleansing and these different therapies like saunas and different things as the tools that we can use to cleanse people's body and set them free of sickness. Or, and like I said, getting off of kind of these pharmaceutical drugs and, and not feeling like we don't have any other alternatives outside of that system. Um, and I go so far, number two, to say these symptoms of healing are expected. It's actually the sign of a good cleanse. Now, if you just do a colon cleanse, and I've heard this so many times, if you just do a colon cleanse, you're like, oh my gosh, that was amazing. I just had so much energy and I had good clarity. And I mean, they're just rattling on and on about how great they feel. 
I think that's awesome. I think that's totally cool. And everybody's at a different place. Everybody has different goals. But you really know you're getting deep when you stop drinking coffee and you do a kidney cleanse and you feel like your kidneys are pulsating so much they're going to like pop out of your back. Okay? I'm exaggerating a little bit, but not really. Because when you start healing your body, it's amazing what you start to feel. I've, I've done kidney cleanses before where my whole back was sore. And I've heard that from people many, many, many times. So your body will start to wake up as it starts to cleanse. And again, it's expected. And I say that because I don't want people to quit. Oh, well, I, took, uh, I started doing this cleanse and I got, and I got a headache, so I quit. I, you know, I, I took this herbal formula and I got a rash. People don't want a rash. And people think that they had a reaction to that herb, that they're allergic to that herb. No, it was doing something. Now, is it possible to have an, an allergy to a plant? It is. It is. And I'm not saying I know a percentage, but my guess is that four out of five times, that person is actually having a healing response, a healing reaction, a good response, not a negative response. And if they are reacting or having an allergy, it just shows that they got a lot of liver congestion, blood toxicity, and their body can't handle the things that are coming in. Okay, that's always a sign of blood toxicity when you're allergic to everything and liver congestion. A drug or pharmaceutical reaction is always bad. So drugs have an action on the body. They do something. They come at a cost. They don't have intelligence like herbs do because God made herbs for the service of mankind. God made pharmaceutical drugs for a lot of really bad reasons. I'm not saying there's not some good intentions behind it, but you know, sin and greed and arrogance and a lot of things get in the way and cloud um, any possibility of having good medicine through that type of a system outside of critical life-saving things, which I'm a fan of. But drug reactions from pharmaceuticals, when you read that, I mean, my grandma, who's passed now, but when she was 86, and not a lot of grandmas do this, but she defied her doctor and said, I'm not going to take that statin drug. Because she actually read this laundry list of side effects and said, I'm 87 years old. Why would I take a drug that can cause all of these things? I don't want to take this. And you know what her doctor said? Okay. Nobody really ever says that to me, but okay. I mean, this, anyway, I don't want to get into that, but it just blows my mind that people take these drugs that say that they can cause seizures, they can cause death, they can cause paralysis. Like these are real things that happen to real human beings. And they can legally give something to you that maims you, paralyzes you, or kills you, and we do it. Do we not think we need herbs and need cleansing? I mean, my goodness, we need this stuff more than, more than ever because people are really suffering out there. So that list of side effects from pharmaceutical drugs are because they are toxic to human function. They work against God's design of the human body. They were not made by God. They were not intended to be in the human body. Okay. An herbal or cleansing reaction can be good, but it can also be good, uh, bad, or it can be too much too fast. And we addressed this a little bit in the last class. People were talking about like taking an antimicrobial formula or some really strong lymph formula, for example. You, there's some strong herbs out there that are like medicine. And you can't just start jumping into these things, especially if you have chronic health issues. Um, because you can have a response that's way too much, way too fast. Now, I don't think it's as dangerous and detrimental as, you know, pharmaceutical drugs, but, you know, you can still have a, an uncomfortable reaction. If somebody has high blood pressure and they drink a bunch of licorice root tea, they're not going to be happy because their blood pressure is going to shoot through the roof because licorice root increases blood pressure. I give licorice root to people all the time with low blood pressure. And it works. I've seen people get off of low blood pressure medication, putting salt in their water and drinking licorice tea. 
Okay, so there's simple things you can do, but you, you do have to have some knowledge and some understanding of how to use herbs um, because you can do too much too fast. And I touched a little bit on the emotional. Cleansing and healing responses can also be emotional. So pay attention to your emotions. Um, I love, I, I work mostly with women and I love working with, with women. What's one cool thing about working with women is you can kind of tell where they're at a lot of times because of their menstrual cycle. Because a lot of women have a lot of issues around their menstrual cycle. A lot of uncomfortable feelings around their menstrual cycle. Sometimes emotional too. So one of my favorite things is when a gal comes back to me, either in a follow-up appointment or I just run into her at the store and she's like, oh my gosh, I gotta tell you, like, I was having my menstrual cycle, but like, I didn't even know it was coming. It just started and it's like, I didn't have any of the symptoms and I didn't have the, the pain and the emotional thing and all, and the cravings for chocolate. And she still might like chocolate, but the cravings weren't there, you know? So I'm just saying like, this is exciting stuff when you're like more balanced and you're healthier and like a menstrual cycle's normal, but it's not supposed to be miserable. There's something wrong if it's miserable, if it's debilitating, if it's something you dread every month, that's not good. So, um, so yeah, the emotional component is huge with, uh, with cleansing too. So how to use herbs to cleanse and restore your health? Start with nutrition. I try to keep it pretty simple. If you look at this cleansing diet sheet, you can look at this real quick. And the reason, this is an herbal class, but the reason I wanted to talk about cleansing diets is if you don't eat a cleansing diet, now it doesn't have to be perfect, but if you don't eat a cleansing diet, you're not cooperating with your body's ability to remove toxins and poisons and waste. And that's the whole goal. So you can't just eat whatever you want and expect herbs to like fix everything. It doesn't work that way, especially when you're cleansing. Now you can just take a blood pressure formula or different things and get some good results. But if you're actually wanting to cleanse, I give you some options. So there's water fasting and juice fasting. That's the most intense way. All fruits and vegetables you can do. The only thing I just make sure to stay away from fat. So no avocados or, or olives or olive oil, but just eating all fruits and veggies because fats interfere with the detoxification process. Option three would be a plant-based diet. So fruits, veggies, and greens with very, very small amounts of fats. And I usually tell people just to stick to a little olives or olive oil or avocado. Um, but in general, we're eliminating heavy foods. We're eliminating acidic foods. So meat, very heavy, very acidic. Nuts, very heavy, very acidic. Dairy, very mucus forming and congesting. If anybody can just do one thing that would help their health is you stop eating dairy. You will feel better. Your body will be healthier and you will have less mucus and congestion and you'll just be better overall period without dairy. Nobody needs it. So, um, and then I, I give some other information on here, the best fruits and vegetables for kidneys, lymph, liver, gallbladder. So you can kind of read through that, but it starts with nutrition because you want to work, you want the herbs to be able to have their maximum benefit and the herbs can only have their maximum benefit if your body's in a cleansing state. Because a lot of these herbs are cleansing herbs. Yes. <laughs> you were helping him. <laughs> oh, cool. <laughs> Yeah, like after a cleanse? Yeah, so would that be like something to eliminate instead of using it as a cleansing oil or cleansing oil? It depends on your cleanse. Okay. Yeah, and we wouldn't have time to talk about all that here. I am going to do a series of videos next month for something that's all about cleansing and fasting and the different types of fasts you can do. And one of them would be one where you do more like bone broths or like kitchery, if you've heard of that, or something like that. So you can do amazing they're more like healing restoration programs. Yeah, and, and building and strengthening as opposed to cleansing. But yeah, you're right, there's different options. And you can use bone broth. I'm not against meat or you know, bone broth or you know, chicken soup. And, yes. 
Yes, and you could totally reintroduce that, but you, I'm saying you can even use those in some healing programs. Okay. Yeah, it just depends on what you're going after. In general, you're mainly trying to get away from heavy acidic mucus forming foods. So it's mainly meat, nuts and seeds, dairy, sugar, processed grains. And I, and I try to make it simple for you here. I wrote out, it's best to mostly eat fruits, vegetables, greens, and possibly if you need more because you need some substance, have a little rice, have a little oatmeal, have a little quinoa, okay? But mainly cut out the rest. So if you do that and do any of our cleanses, a colon cleanse, a kidney cleanse, a liver cleanse, a lymph cleanse, you're going to feel results. You're going to feel different. You're going to feel better. Um, number two, start with the colon and kidneys. So those are the main elimination pathways. Those are the main drains to get flowing to cleanse. Number three, use a clean that's already been designed for you or at least a good formula created by a reputable company and an herbalist. So there's all kinds of great cleanses out there. We have some, but there's all kinds of other great cleanses out there too. I do an Ayurvedic cleanse um, called the Colorado Cleanse by this guy named John Duyard with Life Spa. I love it. I think it's an amazing cleanse. Um, there's all kinds of good programs out there. Um, I love our stuff. I think we have good stuff. I'm never going to pretend like it's the best because I don't know that. And if you say that, that's false advertising. So, but you know, we do see a lot of cool stories um, of people getting well, getting off of drugs, getting set free, menstrual cycles restored, getting off of antidepressants. I mean, you can go on and on and on and on. It's because God's a healer. All we're doing is getting out of the way the things that block healing. Yes. Yes, we actually have a, a blood pressure formula with herbs to lower high blood pressure. A lot of your cardiovascular herbs like hawthorn, garlic, cayenne, all those things will bring blood pressure down. Yep. All right, uh, where are we at? Um, four, start with a small amount of an herb or formula and slowly increase dosages. So there's a lot of different ways to do this. And again, this just comes with education. You can take small dosages of herbs over time and they will work over time. The, any of the hormone balancing formulas, the thyroid support formula, the adrenal boost tea, the endocrine balance formula, the adaptogen power blend, any of those, if you start taking that every day and you just make it part of your routine and you take it every day for a couple of months, you will feel better. You'll have more energy, more stamina, more endurance, probably easier to get up in the morning. It'll just, you'll just be better in general. So you can take small dosages of herb over time. That works great. The other thing with cleansing and healing is we don't have to really, we have to get educated, but we don't have to fear herbs. There's a, a medical system out there that wants you to be scared of herbs. I mean, I see people go to the doctor, get on a pharmaceutical drug. What else are you taking? Oh, we're taking these herbal formulas. Stop all of that. None of that is approved by the FDA. And they just like get people off all of the natural things, just like by default. And it's because they're not educated on it. Um, but they can't because it's not part of their system. So legally, they can't even recommend it. That's why they have people get off it. But, but people need to do, I'll, I'll, get, I'll answer your question in one second. People for healing need to do larger dosages of herbs for healing. I'll give the example I gave in the last class. I had a gal who was cold, weak, weak immune system, struggling with mold and different infections. I got her on the digestive heat powder which, by the way, that formula is cumin, cardamom, coriander, ginger, and fennel. These are herbs called diaphoretic herbs that stimulate and strengthen digestion through bringing heat into the intestinal tract. I had her do a teaspoon twice a day. When she called me the next month, she was a totally different person. She'd been struggling for two years, felt like she had no answers. She felt totally different, felt like she had hope, felt like she was getting her life back. Her body temperature was getting warm again. She could feel her fingers and toes again but she was doing a tablespoon three times a day of the digestive heat powder. She said, my body just wants it. Like, I can't stop. I'm like, go for it, get better, right? We don't have to be really necessarily scared of herbs. Like I said, we need to be educated, but a lot of times when we're going after something, we can do high dosages of these herbs. Another really cool story, we had this guy come in, he was a boxer and he would do coffee before his workouts because it would give him like a supercharged workout, right? And he actually boxed professionally. 
And we have a formula called Spartan Pre-Workout Maximizer. And it's all herbal. And I'm like, I'll give you some for free. Just try it. And he came back and he's like, he goes, I'm going to be honest. I didn't want it to work. Like he, he had the mindset, like, I don't want this to work. <laughs> but he actually did it. He stopped the coffee. He took that formula. He goes, I felt amazing. My workouts were amazing. And he just was shocked. He couldn't believe it. And so sometimes athletes can take large amounts of our Strength of Samson blend, which is a protein powder mixed with superfoods, or Adaptogen Power blend, herbs that increase strength and stamina and endurance. You can take large doses of it. This is for you. A tablespoon twice a day of some of these Chinese tonic herbs, astragalus, ashwagandha, maca, ginseng. Um, you can do large dosages of herbs. But you can also do small amounts over time, and that's probably better. But if you're working on your liver or your kidneys or whatever, you can increase the dosages and get well. I want to answer her question back there. Yeah, I was just curious what you um, use for trusted sources to educate yourself on various herbs and their interactions. Yeah, so there's some books out there. I have like 20 in my office. I couldn't name them all off the top of my head. Uh, Michael tierra has got a lot of good stuff, Planetary Herbs. Um, I like his stuff. There's some simple books. There's one called The Way of Herbs. There's a very, very simple beginner herb book, and it's called The Way of Herbs. Um, I could give you some others. I got them in my office. I could show them to you. Um, I just don't kind of have them memorized. But yeah, there's a lot of good sources out there. Yeah. So while we're in the midst of the cleanse, is it okay to still be taking like your multivitamin or, you know, like a wish garden tincture while you're doing it depends on what it is. So she asks, is it okay to be taking other things while you're doing the cleanse? It, it, it always depends. So if I'm actually consulting with somebody and I recommend a colon cleanse, for example, I'm going to say, give me the supplement, show me the supplement you're taking, and we'll decide if there's any of them like, that you don't need. Um, most of the time, it's fine to take a multivitamin or say you're taking iodine or say you're taking whatever. I mean, most of the other supplements are fine. I'm mainly making sure there's nothing you're taking that's interfering with the cleansing process. So for example, if you're taking a tablespoon of coconut oil a day because you heard it's good for you, I probably don't want you doing that on the cleanse. So we might look at those things, but for the most part, it's, it's going to be okay. Yes? Yes, good question. So with kids, um, it's a good question. I, like we have three kids and my wife's standing over there so I'm gonna be careful what I say. Um, but it's funny because when the kids are with daddy, they, they, kinda, they kinda fast. And just because I think it's kinda fun. Um, but there's a lot of times where, but we've done this, I mean just the other day, my wife can uh, confirm this, she's right there. We had fruit salad in the morning. What's that mean? We got up, cut up some mangoes, berries, uh, what else do we put in that? Um, just all kinds of fruit, kiwi, kiwi, and it's amazing. And then all of a sudden we're out, we're bike riding, we're playing, and then we go run an errand, and it's like five o'clock. And we're like, oh, like, yeah, maybe let's have an early dinner. Okay, great. Now, between that time, oftentimes my kids don't eat. And I found that if they're active and they're playing and they're having fun and they're running around and they're exercising. But I've also found, now this is a huge point, so I'm glad you brought this up. I have found this, the healthier your child is, and it's the same with adults too, the healthier and cleaner your system is, the less you feel like you need food all the time. The more out of balance and the unhealthier you are, the more you need food. So if you're one of those people who are like, I got to eat every two hours and my blood sugar is this and that, there's a problem. There's something going on there. We should be able to fast for extended periods of time. Now, I'm kind of joking a little bit with my kids because, you know, they might split a snack bar in the office because we're out and about or whatever. You know, we're not starving our kids. But I'm just saying, like, I probably err on the side of underfeeding my children where I feel like most of our culture feels like almost like this guilty obligation to feed our kids lots of food. And if we skip a meal, we're like a bad parent and other people are gonna think badly of us. I don't know what it is, but it's just kind of weird. Um, but no, we, uh, we, we eat pretty minimally. 
A lot of times our dinners are literally roasted vegetables in the oven. Potatoes, carrots, onions, sweet potatoes, roasted in the onion, uh, roasted in the oven, a little olive oil, and that's all we eat for dinner. And it's like, and my kids poop two, three times a day. And, and I feel like they eat a third of what most kids in America eat. And then kids out there are constipated, eating three meals a day plus snacks. I'm like, what's going on? So anyway, I don't know if that helps, but we kind of mix it in. And my daughter's only six, but it's kind of cute because she's like, I just want to eat grapes tomorrow. And we're like, okay, why do you want to eat grapes tomorrow? Well, I want to fast. I want to be like you, daddy. You know, and I think it's, I think it's cool to like teach our kids at a young age that like you don't have to eat all day every day and you don't have to eat every time you're hungry and that there's a difference between like hunger and appetite and it's like you know we're not weird about it but I would just say we err on the side of eating light and eating less and if I can skip a meal I'm going to do it <laughs> yes Like you're talking about in different formulas, yes. like the same herbs in different formulas. Yeah, that is totally fine. Okay. Yeah, most, most of the herbs you take out there, and this would include some education about herbs, but most of the herbs people are taking are safe herbs. They're nutritious herbs. They're berries. They're greens. They're that kind of stuff. There's some crossover. It's no big deal. Okay. And you can't really overdo it. Okay. So you're, you're going to be good. Okay. Yep. Yeah. And I was teaching gymnastics and doing costumes and doing like one arm pull ups and one arm push ups and like doing burpee back lifts and I can peak physical like shape totally. like seven times a day. Yep. Input so, output. Okay. It all comes down to input output. Yeah. Yeah, and I'm glad you said that because he said he when he was in great shape he was eating a lot. It's input output. You look at our culture today. You know. I've heard this a thousand times in my consults. Well, I've been told breakfast is the most important meal of the day, right? You've heard that, right? right? Okay, well, all throughout human history, even go back two generations to my grandparents' age when they had to get up at five in the morning to get out in the field because they were working their tushies off and sweating all day, breakfast was the most important meal of the day. Yeah. You can't make 10 hours of manual labor without eating. But our culture today doesn't need to eat three meals a day plus snacks when we're mostly sedentary. <laughs> so this is why intermittent fasting and these things have become more popular. Now, the more you exercise, the more your output, the more you work a physically demanding job, the more you do what you do for a living, input, output. But just make sure it's the right input, right? So that's right on, and I'm glad you addressed that. Yep. So I'm going to do one more because I want to tell you what we're doing for the social hour and it's going to be a lot of fun. Yes? Um, how many times would you recommend per person to fast or cleanse a body per capita year? That would, be a, uh, that would depend on the person. So I feel like, like myself and some other people I know, we feel kind of called to like a fasted type of a lifestyle. You think of like John the Baptist and some of the people in the Bible, it was a fasted type of a lifestyle. Uh -huh. So I feel that kind of a calling, but a lot of people I tell like twice a year, every spring, every summer, okay. do a cleanse or every spring or every fall, okay. you know, do a cleanse, do a colon cleanse, do a kidney cleanse. The summer's a great time to cleanse. <coughs> Lots of fresh fruits and vegetables. You can be outside exercising, hiking, biking. I mean, if you just do 10 days, raw food diet, eat only fruits and vegetables and exercise every day outside in the sun, you're going to be a changed person if you can make that sacrifice. So yeah, I usually tell people a couple times uh, a year for maybe a more intense cleanse, but the other thing is intermittent fasting. Skip breakfast. If you eat your last meal at six o'clock and then you eat at noon the next day, you're fasting for 18 hours every day. That's amazing for your body, takes a break off digestion, resets your metabolism. All things good happen when you do that. You can be an extreme athlete and exercise a lot and, and fast for 18 hours a day and still have plenty of energy and feel good. 
So intermittent fasting is another way you can make it a part of your daily lifestyle. There's a lot of people that I know that basically fast during the day. So juices or maybe just some fruit um, and they eat one meal at night, um, maybe like with their family, you know, because that's a typical meal time. So you have, and there's even a book about it called The Warrior Diet. It's kind of how the, the Greeks and the Romans did it a couple thousand years ago. But they would be out all day training or in battle or whatever, and they wouldn't eat mostly during the day. And then they would eat that one meal at night with their family. So there's different ways to do it. Okay, so thank you guys. The social hour is going to be fun. We have this amazing food, amazing raw balls, three different kinds of raw balls. Start with one. We want to make sure everybody gets one before you get crazy. Save me one. Um, <laughs> But uh, yeah, the food's going to be amazing. And then we're doing an herb tasting. We're going to change this room. We're going to bring out these tables. We're going to have three different tables, three different categories of herbs. And on each table, it's going to be two single herbs. So you can taste like what goji berry tastes like or even lion's mane. You can try some single herbs. And then there's going to be one herbal formula for you to taste. And everybody gets to participate in that as well. And we just want you guys to meet, interact, talk to somebody you haven't met before. Um, you can talk to me, ask questions. And then we're going to do one more final class at 1 o'clock. Cool? And just so you know how you take your herbs, you can either take them, try them dried, like the powder herb, and just try it on your tongue. But they're in these little containers with lids. So just go to a water station or the tea station, put a little water or tea in there, shake it up, and that's another way you can try the herbs.